Hi, it's Lee here and welcome to my creative space. Today I'm really excited to show you around my studio, give you an insight into what got me started into my art career and take you through a few of the pieces that, uh, that got me started. My first piece of art and right up through the, uh, my other pieces as well. So please, if you'd like to subscribe along, tap the bell to get a notification of future episodes. So let's get into it. So this is my studio space. It's really just a corner of the lounge room. We have an L-shaped lounge room in our house and I've seemed to have taken over it. So it really just consists of my large easel and workbench which is attached to the easel and this repurposed medical trolley uh, which has all my supplies on it. Now before I dive straight into the nitty gritty of this studio tour I really want to take you through the inspiration behind my art journey first. Well this is what I started off with, just your basic $20 easel, plastic palette and just one of those basic cheap set of brushes, Royal and Langnickel, just Taclons and just some basic Semco, uh, not even artist grade paint, just more craft style paint. So the first three paintings I painted were, were done with these. So it just goes to show you don't need any expensive gear to really get into painting. Okay so everyone has to start somewhere with their art career and look let's get to it. This is my first piece of art I've ever created. So here it is. So just a basic scene out at Richmond Bridge in Tasmania. Uh, just a few dings on the water. I took a reference photo and just try to copy that and look it didn't probably end up anywhere near it but look it's it's fun it was, I was just so pleased to get a great result out of the first one and it, look the biggest tip I can give you is just just get started you know you, you never know what you can create until you just give it a go uh, I really do suggest you just start off on a small sort of uh, canvas like this or a little art panel uh, and give it a go uh, you never know So I was inspired after that piece, it was great to get the result so you know it was time to get into another one and once again just of the Richmond Bridge itself looked much tougher, a bit of detail in that one so here it is. So once again you know I've, look I've gone for a slightly bigger canvas I thought oh let's challenge myself a bit more, a um, few trees, a little house in there and the bridge itself. And yes, look, I've probably oversaturated everything. New artists tend to do that. You tend to just splash the colour in there, not knowing what I was doing, you know, just learning techniques. So once again, it's these little studies are just learning how to paint, you know, how to create different textures and different looks. So moving on now to number three and once again it was from a photo um, so it's the Eddystone Point Lighthouse so here it is. Once again I've just gone for a slightly well I've literally just turned the same size canvas as the last one in portrait mode just to fit this um, lighthouse in but once again I've just tried using a bit more paint uh, just around the the foliage area just to get create some different textures, a bit more work in the sky just to have a different effect of light to, to dark and obviously a bit more detail in the lighthouse itself. So this is number three but once again I'm you know I'm just trying to do the best work I possibly can. I, I took me probably a while to do probably a couple of months to paint that just a little bit each night. So 
So this next scene is actually what got me inspired to start painting in the first place. Uh, it's a scene on the east coast of Tasmania called Binalong Bay. Uh, beautiful orange sort of basalty rocks, uh, seascape. Um, visited there, took some shots and look, the photos, look, the photos turned out horrible actually. I didn't really like them. Um, I'm a keen photographer. So I do like taking photos everywhere I go, um, but these would look, they just didn't turn out well. So I thought I can do a better job. I know I'll just paint it. So here it is, painting number four. As you can see, it's quite a detailed rocky seascape. Now this painting, it almost, well, it almost stopped me actually painting ever again. It took two years to paint. Uh, off and on, I'd get dejected with it for two or three months. I was doubting my ability to actually complete it. And I sort of, at this stage, turned to YouTube just for motivation, really, looking at other great painters and what they could do. And it inspired me to push on and complete it. Now I do recommend anyone starting out probably not to jump into something this complex or this big. Uh, it probably was a bit too much straight away but look I'm glad I pushed through that and got it done and I'm happy with the result. So after that sort of milestone painting for me the floodgates opened a little bit. I was, uh, once I finished that I was determined to uh, push on and create more artwork. I lingered for two years on that piece of art and you know, I've only been painting for a bit over four years now, so uh, it's probably taken a lot of my time up just doing that. So I really wanted to push on and try to create works quicker. So painting number five is sort of a surreal painting that I painted out of my head, basically. I have a beautiful view out of my lounge room window of the Derwent River and the Tasman Bridge. So I coupled that with the, what I really wanted to paint was the thylacine, uh, Tasmanian tiger. So. Here it is, painting number five. So painting different things also helps you with your technique. So I wanted to paint some fur and you know, animals anatomy is always quite hard. So I thought I'd give that a go as well. So number six, well, that's sitting up here behind me. Uh, you know, I learned so much out of the last few paintings. I was able to jump into a more complex scene, uh, especially with the, all the root work and the detail in the tree itself and painting water. So that was sort of probably the hardest thing I've had to do so far is painting water. So yeah, here it is, number six. Okay, so a little bit about this painting. This is the first time I've actually created an art panel uh, so this is MDF panel with a frame built behind it and it was enjoyable to actually do this process as well as the painting. This one is a scene of Cradle Mountain. I mainly painted this with a palette knife and just brushed the water and the sky. And the palette knife really does add that texture to your painting. It's quite worth a try. It also has metallics in the paintwork as well, just to give it that 3D effect when you walk around it. It's quite unique. Moving on now to painting number seven. 
this was a departure for me. It fused my technical drawing skills with my painting skills. Also painted on one of my handmade panels. Here it is, painting number seven. The next painting is obviously painting number eight, and this was another fusion between my technical drawing skills and my art. Also painting on a handmade panel. Here it is, painting number eight. So moving on now to painting number nine, which is of Mount Kate House in Cradle Mountain. And this is one that I actually did a full YouTube video on the making of, if you want to go back and watch that. So I promise you a studio tour, so let's get into it. Now I don't really have a massive studio, it's literally just the corner of my lounge room. I have an L-shaped lounge room and I just use this small corner of it. So I just basically have two workstations, obviously my easel and this storage trolley which has literally everything on it. Now these are just repurposed trolleys that I used and same with the easel, I literally just made my own easel out of a repurposed trolley as well. Now I do like to have things mobile, I can literally wheel it out, you know, clean behind it, all that type of thing, help move it closer to me while I'm working or wherever I want to take it. Also has power on board this trolley too, which is quite handy for charging your phones and etc. It is quite uh, a useful trolley. Moving on to the easel now, and well, I have this long bench. It's about, my easel's about 1.8 meters long. Same as the bench, really. About 350 wide, the bench top on it. And it carries all my paintbrushes, uh, mediums, palette, my laptop. Absolutely everything I can get on there. I want it in easy reach while I'm working away. This makes the workflow uh, much easier. And as you can see there, I don't have really expensive brushes. I use Princeton, Royal and Langnickel. Can't forget the colour wheel if you're starting out. Must have a few brushes that people actually buy me for presents and things. And I have a sort of a large flat glass palette. Also I like to put that cellophane over the top to aid clean up. I hate scraping and cleaning things off. I'm going to house my drink. My oil paints there. And these are just some cleats I put on the back of my paintings just to hang up on the easel. So I'll screw them to the back of the frame of the painting and just hang it up and move it up and down to any position I like on my easel. So moving around at the back of the easel now, it just shows how wide that base is. This is a steel U-frame trolley that I attached the timber to, just made my own easel basically. So this shows the cleat system so you can adjust your painting up and down. So I always house my cameras and things underneath my laptop, it sits on a little stand on this bench as well. So I can have all my reference material, I use the computer a lot. So it's right next to my canvas or panel whenever I'm painting away. Just makes things so much easier. Versus sit down and, and work or stand up and work. And also you probably see a bit of inspiration on my easel too. That's Rhonda Garwood's Rosellas there. It's always great to have other artists uh, work hanging around. Also got a little postcard of Andrew Tischler's winter landscape as well sitting on my easel just for inspiration. Now moving on to the lighting, look I've just got 
sort of cheap desk lamps that I've adapted four of them, two come down from the top two which cover the bottom half of the canvas, one on each side it's important to have good lighting um, this is just daylight globes not overly bright, just enough to douse the canvas and have no dark spots on it so it covers all of the canvas so this lighting setup really only cost about $60 so look, I don't like spending heaps of money, I don't have heaps of money to throw around on expensive gear, so I just use what I can to make do. So moving on now to underneath my easel, it's got like a flat square tray under it. It houses things like my drop sheets, hair dryer to speed up those gesso coatings, do them quickly, uh, canvas panels, a lot of these people bought me. Uh, these smaller panels are very useful, some plastic containers, some ice, alcohol iso wipes to just quickly wipe your hands or, or your palate, so just uh, a storage area under there. And also while we're down here I'll show you that even the easel has four wheels on it so I can actually move that anywhere in the house. So to the right of me I have a north facing window which is nice to let daylight in and this whole rig including the lighting will move around with the easel it's all attached. So I mentioned earlier that this trolley has electricals in it, it actually came like that's a surgical trolley so in the back right corner here is the power board, regulated power supply, very nice. Let's charge my stuff up on that while I'm working away. Moving around to the side, it also has a nice power switch there. So it just shuts the whole thing down, lights and all. Every light's connected to it. So moving up to the top shelf now, and this is where my Linex A3 drawing board is kept. Also, I move this over to my easel, just sit it on top of where my pallet is, and it fits there nicely ready for when I'm doing a sketch for one of my main studio paintings. So moving down a shelf, this is where I have all my mediums, all my solvents, all my varnishes, some more ISO wipes there, some masking tape, you know, containers I need to use, all housed in this area. So moving down to the pull-out shelf for this trolley, I have my main acrylic paints that I'm currently using. Uh, they're all housed in here. So moving down underneath that drawer, I have things like my pallets, sort of containers to house mediums in, etc. Larger timber pallets underneath, a chopping board if I ever need that. Baking paper, I used to use this to paint on so I didn't have to clean up the mess, but I've moved to cellophane now. An old timber pallet I used for quite a few years before I moved to my glass pallet now. So moving down to this drawer system, it's just a, one of those cheap $30, $40 ones. Uh, just mounted underneath this trolley to house all my paints and I try to sort them into colours. Mainly acrylic paints in here. Really it's got every acrylic paint I think I've ever bought. They're all useful, uh, you don't need to throw any out, especially now I've moved over to oils a bit more now, only just starting that. So I will use these acrylic paints to block in and finish off with oils. Now as you can see there's quite a few different brands in here, of different qualities as well. And that's because I really just got my hands on whatever I could spend a bit, bit of my money on trying out different paints, what I liked, what I didn't like and eventually moved up to more artist grade quality paints in the end which you know you really do need to use if you're actually just finishing your paint, paintings with acrylics. You really need to uh, use these for the light fastness quality which means they won't fade over time. Now just a quick little recommendation for new artists, 
I would suggest using the fluid or more flow types of acrylics first or soft body, that type of acrylic paint. The properties of it allow for easier painting. Uh, the thicker paints, the artist quality uh, thicker paints, heavy body acrylics, uh, they are quite a little bit harder to paint with in the fact that they're good for texturing but it's harder to spread out over the canvas. So try starting with the fluids first. So here's another drawer of just acrylic varnishes and sealers, a bit of gesso, just uh, a different brand and different thickness. So just some more drawing equipment in this one and an Osram globe box. This is what I use in my lights to light up my paintings. A drawing ruler for my Linux board. Here's my compass and divider set which were used on a couple of my paintings earlier that I showed you. Underneath that just a little watercolour sketchbook. And also just a little A5 sketch pad just to muck around with. Just a little knick-knack drawer here. Some plastic palette knives. Picture hanging kits. Uh, paint tin openers. Very handy device that. Suggest you grab one of them whenever you're at the hardware store. Also some corner pegs to stretch your canvases. Good old foam just to make those textures on your rock sometimes. Works quite well actually. And your creative space wouldn't be complete without obviously the dog's bed. Why not? And when I turn around to look out my front window, I'm blessed with this view. Very inspiring. This is actually a view of the Tasman Bridge and Durant River in Tasmania. Also, we get some beautiful sunrises coming over those hills at the back. Now, as you can see, it's not a huge space, but it's just how you use it. I try to make it as easy as possible. I try to keep the cost down as much as possible as well. And look, here's a surprise. Not many studios or creative spaces has a lift. So there you go, I can take the lift down to the garage, work away downstairs. If you take anything out of this today, you don't have to be the best painter or artist in the world, you just gotta get started, get into it, create away, and you never know where you'll end up. So just give it a go. Well that wraps up our studio tour today. I'd really like to know what your journey was like when you first started. So please leave a comment below, tell me about yours, and we'll see you next time in the next episode. See you then.